Hello, everyone. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the officers for always uh, giving me the opportunity and the trust uh, to invite me to give a short talk when it comes to uh, medical wellness, when it comes to health, and when it comes to sciences. So I'd like to also say hello to uh, our colleagues. And, hello. Uh, hello. <laughs> I have been uh, talking about COVID uh, in the previous uh, uh, seminars, but now I'll be talking about something else. Uh, thank you. And again, can we go to our next slide, please? Oh, it's a little bit about myself, but what I would like to show here is that, you know, we are a group of doctors from the University of Santo Tomas, and I am with a fraternity uh, made up of students as well as senior consultants, and there's about 300 of us. And a lot of the people are now so afraid about COVID, and rightly so, but some of it are misplaced fear, okay? When you hear that the hospitals are full, it is not really full, but only the part that handles the COVID per se. Of course, the delivery room will still handle the pregnant women giving, giving birth. The NICU or the neonatal intensive care unit will still handle the neonates and the infants. But honestly, although we hear a lot of people getting sick with COVID and saying, uh, honestly, I contracted COVID myself in the middle of July. In fact, I excuse myself from Dr. Helen Molano and saying, oh, sorry, I cannot uh, join because I would like to uh, still rest for a while. And in the middle of July, I rested. And by the end of July, I got well. My, my goal is not to be hospitalized because I know is what's going on inside the hospital. I may get more sick there. Uh, they may do some more... Uh, uh, procedures there. So I just tried to treat myself. And 98% of those who contract COVID still get well, as long as you know how to treat yourself early on in the problem. So by August, I did my RT-PCR swab test and I'm negative. Now, the reason I'm telling you all of this is that there are still more other diseases that comprises the hospital. There are many more who suffer heart diseases, complications from diabetes, hypertension, uh, stroke, than COVID combined. Now, I'm one of the doctors who are very optimistic. Some of you, I'm sorry about putting this uh, slide for a long time. Some of you are probably holding your cell phones right now. Please go to Google, go to Wikipedia, and check for the past two years, how many have died already from COVID? You will see the number. It is less than 5 million people all over the world. Now I'm not downplaying it. That's still 5 million people dying. Now, I'd like you to Google 1918 pandemic. You will see that about 40 million people have died from it. Now that's a lot of people, but if you are going to look by statistics and percentages, the number of people now are still way, way more than the number of people during the 1918. So 40 million is a big chunk of their population. The 5 million that we have right now is a smaller chunk of our total population. But I tell you, since I'm one of those who are very optimistic as a medical doctor, I'd like you to Google. 20 of 1921, go to images. If you see the images in 1918, you will see people who are sick wearing masks, wearing face shields, very scared. If you take a look at 1921, that's three years after, you will see no one is wearing masks. Go to images. That is the time of the roaring 20s where Hollywood became a boom. Isn't it? So what am I trying to say here? No matter what they say, COVID might be here, but we will develop immunity from it. We will go back to normal lives. And in 1921, 1930, 1940, you probably have grandparents who live in 1950. 
they do not remember that virus. There will come a time, as the previous speaker said, this will just be a memory of us, for us, okay? So don't be too scared. In fact, a lot of Filipinos are not scared so much about the virus, but more scared about the lockdowns. Let's go to the next slide. This is more scary for a lot of people. For our first speaker, for the students, it is very scary. Uh, my youngest child works in Singapore and they mentioned that there's a lot of people who are depressed there. The suicide rate is very high compared to the previous 10 years. And as you can see from this slide, there's a lot of people who are suffering from stress. A stress that may lead to hypertension, that may lead to gastro, intestinal problem that may lead to other complications. And the recent stress right now is what you can see on social media about the call by the Department of Health. Should we allow as parents to get our children get vaccinated? Of course, we would like them protected, but what comes to mind sometimes is what happened a couple of years ago about Lengvaksha. Now that is a gamble, even for our children. So next slide, please. Now, this is the result of the lockdown, but not of COVID. We see a lot of people suffering from the two years that they have been eating improperly, not exercising, so afraid to go out that they do not get the vitamin D from the sunshine, so it causes havoc in their digestive system. Next slide, please. We call it dysbiosis. When we say dysbiosis, inside our stomach and intestines, the bad bacteria multiplies more than the good bacteria. It can cause diarrhea, it can cause indigestion, it can cause a constipation. And the reason for that is, next slide. The reason for that is here on the next slide because we rely so much on our mobile phones. That is also one thing that is not present in 1918. They have no social media, they have less reasons to be so afraid, but now since we have the social media, we cannot get away from our, mo our mobile phones. Everything we do is through the mobile phone, including ordering of our food. There is nothing wrong with it, but let's see the next slide. Do you order vegetables online? Do you order healthy foods online? No, we order comfort foods. We order sweets. We know that they are not healthy, but you know, that is how we get by. And before we only eat those kinds of foods occasionally, like maybe on a weekend, but because of this lockdown, we eat, we eat it almost every day. And what happens? Our digestive system suffers and ultimately our own immune system suffers and when it does these are the people who succumb to the covid to become moderate or severe case of infection i told you i contracted covid my approach is go to my immune system it is not my approach to put a lot of this medicine inside my body but by raising our immune system, then our own natural killer cells will identify these viruses, will kill these viruses, and later on develop natural immunity. Nothing beats natural immunity, not even the vaccine. Remember the vaccine? They are saying it's good. I agree. But now they are saying you need booster shots for it. And how many booster shots should we need for it? third, fourth, fifth, or sixth? Have you read about Israel? They are now on their fifth booster shot. They are 60 to 70% vaccinated. And yet, 
their incidence is still higher than the Bundok's people from South Africa, from the whole even of Africa. That's something that we should remember. Now, not only about our choice of food is the problem. Next slide, please. Next slide. This is another problem. The, no, no, no. Let's go back to the previous one. The delivery system. We agree that uh, delivery is the, what is important now because we do not want to go out. But when you open your door to those who deliver, how sure are we that it is clean and sterile as we would like them to be? Do we spray everything? So these are the concerns right now. Now, all of this, the microbes and even the chemicals that we spray on our food, on our countertops, on our table, on our hands, they all go to a particular organ, especially the comfort food. Next slide, please. They go to this organ. Hugely affected is the liver because the liver is the one that is responsible for removing all of the toxins, but not only detoxification, the liver has more than a hundred plus functions. And if one part of the liver is not working well, then all the other functions will not work well. Okay, now let us see what are the hazards that can affect the liver. Next, please. Wow, too much coffee and energy drinks. You know, some of us, we like buying the coffee that costs 150 pesos to 200 pesos. <laughs> it tastes the same as your 20 pesos coffee. But the 150 pesos has your name written on the tumbler. So we are buying it for our name to be written on the tumbler. And then they shout your name. <laughs> Next, too much alcohol. The teachers would like this. Excessive workload. <laughs> okay, next would be smoking. Prescription medicines, we do not know, but we have been taking so much medication. I've seen a lot of people with hypertension take three different kinds of medicine just for one purpose, and that is to bring down their blood pressure. Or many different kinds of medicine just to bring down their blood sugar apart from their injections. So all of those go to the liver. Infection, stresses, processed food, environmental toxins, allergies, and most definitely, poor nutrition. All of that damages the liver. And we see that regularly in the emergency room in the hospitals. So next slide, please. The liver functions. These are the functions of the liver that is important. You know, including the production of the blood, including the production of antibodies so that you'll be able to fight off the COVID. But not only COVID, as well as many other infections, do you know that there are more people on a yearly basis dying from tuberculosis in the Philippines than COVID? Something to think of, no? Next slide, please. These again are some of the liver functions, including the vitamins storage, the minerals storage, so if our liver is not functioning well, the vitamins and the minerals are not stored well, then what happens is the immune system goes down and easily we contract diseases. And these are some of my real cases during this pandemic. Next slide, please. I still work face-to-face -face four times a week. I go to my clinics, which we have three branches aside from visiting the hospital, and I do three times a week of telemedicine. Notice what they're pointing? Their digestive system is still a big problem. Next slide, please. Notice this gentleman. These are two different gentlemen. It's still the digestive problem. The one on the right has an enlarged liver. The one on the left has a yellow or jaundiced eye. That means it's still the liver. And take note. This is only this September. Next slide, please. Again, as you can see, I'm wearing my mask, doing all the precautions. And with this patient, who is a male, develop ascites or water that is uh, filling his abdomen 
that it looks like six months pregnancy already and we have to puncture the abdomen so we can drain it as you can see on the left side of the screen so take care of our liver don't just be afraid for your lungs and how do we do that next slide please we do a testing a regular testing if you are taking medications don't wait until you are yellow or jaundiced get a blood test done if your urine turns dark then the usual before it's colored beer and later on it's like tea or weak tea when you have a little bit of the nausea and the vomiting fatigue and abdominal pain get a liver test done why next slide please because the liver even though it is one of the organs that can that can regenerate it does not complain you know it will only complain if it is already up to the fourth stage of damage so from the normal liver we can develop cirrhosis and later on a tumor of the liver now what do we see in the laboratory test very easy next slide please get a serum chemistry done and they will do all of this for you in the philippines you can have this done for less than a thousand or thousand five hundred pesos you can see alp and ast which is sgot and sgpt you can see your albumin and you can see all of those things you just compare the values versus the normal results and the next slide will show you next slide the reason for it okay so those are the numbers i'm leaving this slide here so you can uh, copy it and then get your blood test done now why because of the next slide we have to accept the fact that this is us right now we are getting big <laughs> we are not moving as much we are eating a lot of carbohydrates so obesity will lead to the next slide not only our abdomen will become big our liver will have fat deposits inside it next slide please now the liver you have seen in the market is brown it's smooth that's a healthy liver now a liver that is fatty will look like bacon with fat linings inside it now those fat linings does not work it deducts from the 101 functions of the liver so that means our liver is not functioning at 100 percent capacity but much much less so it affects our whole body next slide please and this is how it looks when we slice up the liver now please take a look on your left screen nothing you see there it's smooth but when you slice it, you will see fat deposits in between. Remember that. Next slide, please. And this is what happens. A healthy liver develops fatty liver. If you get an ultrasound, they will say that to you also. The good news is there is that it is reversible. Now, sometimes you will have a lot of fat deposits on your bloodstream your cholesterol will go high, your triglyceride will go high, your LDL and VLDL will go up. You think it's just in the blood, but before it went into your blood, it was in your liver. The good news there is, it is still reversible. But six months later, only six months, if we do not take care of it, it becomes an irreversible cirrhosis of the liver. Next slide, please. So what causes this liver to be fatty? Medicines, fats in the blood, diabetes, even rapid weight loss. There are some women who are doing one a day meal. It's a fad, it's not good. It is better that we eat small meals frequently than do your once a day fad eating. Of course, obesity and what we cannot get away from is our genetic inheritance so how do we test if our liver is getting fat sometimes you don't have to go to the laboratory all you need to do is this next slide please 
You get your fingers and touch your abdomen. If you can touch more than two inches of skin with fats in between, that means you have a lot of fat deposits. Two inches like this. Okay, <laughs> next slide, please. What will happen? The shape of our abdomen will become pear shape, and later on we'll have big abdomen, but very skinny, skinny arms and skinny legs. So the things that we should avoid during this lockdown is this. Next slide, please. All of that, take a picture of that. You know that, all those oily, fatty, meaty meals, all those sweets that we love ordering from leche flan, et cetera. Next slide, please. And how do we remedy that? Let us start taking ginger, as tea, green tea, put lemon in your water, and don't drink iced water all the time. Warm water with lemon upon waking up in the morning with your meals is much better. Don't be afraid of the garlic. Fry a little bit and eat it as it is. Eat a lot of fruits from papaya to the other fruits and drink turmeric. Another thing that we can take every morning is this. Next slide, please. Which I do. Two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. Add two tablespoons of honey and maybe a cup of warm or hot water. Sip it slowly. And that becomes your first morning coffee. You can take your coffee, try to find a healthier coffee, but with your breakfast, not before your breakfast. And take a lot of this the, uh, dietary advice you can see on screen. Next slide. Unless we, the doctors of today, becomes you, the dietitians of tomorrow, the dietitians today will be the doctors tomorrow. So I hope we become dietitians for ourselves, for our family. You think it is just alcohol? You think it is just face mask or face shield or distancing will protect us from getting COVID? No, a very big part is what we put inside our body and that is nutrition. Last slide, please. I thank everyone. This is my number. That is my Facebook. If you want to be friends, just look for me. I appreciate the Royal Institute of Singapore. Bye.